morning, my friends. I hope you're doing well, wherever you are. It's very wintry here in Copenhagen. Uh, it actually snowed yesterday, so it's very cold outside, but inside the apartment, it's feeling very cozy. And today we are discussing a cool home that really inspires me and I think will likely inspire you. So real quick, go light a candle, sip a little coffee, and let's get inspired about architecture and interior design together. Today's home that we're diving into is the modern country house of Russell Pinch and Una Bannon. They are the furniture and lighting designers behind the studio Pinch. They renovated and added onto this historic building, which was actually formerly an ice cream factory, which is almost too adorable to believe. Unsurprisingly, they purchased this building and the incredible site that it's located on through the modern house, which again, if any of my viewers are in the UK and value good design and are in the market for a new home and have a good amount of money, you should exclusively be shopping through the modern house, okay? So they worked with the architect, David Cohn and his team, and the combination of their very, very smart architectural approach with Pinch's thoughtful consideration of the interior and furniture makes for one of the dreamiest spaces you could ever imagine. I actually first discovered this home on Pinterest. I saw this amazing photo, but there's quite a few resources you can use to better understand this home and really dive into the design. There's a great video on Pinch's website where they're talking about their studio's design philosophy and it's actually filmed in this house. There are also some photos, a plan, and a section available on David Cohn's website. And of course, there's the house and garden home tour titled Inside a Former Ice Cream Factory Transformed into a Modern Country House, which is part of their design notes series. I'm citing all my sources here. So as always, if you haven't seen that home tour, feel free to go watch it and then come back here so we can chat about it or just stick around and I'll walk you through this absolute dream of a house. So I want to talk about this in more detail when we really get into the interior, but I think one of the key factors that makes this house so fantastic is all of the wonderful furniture and objects and art within it, which isn't surprising because these two are designers and creators themselves, so they understandably value good design and craft and they curate their home accordingly. I personally think there's just something so unparalleled about having objects that are handmade. Having that human touch in a space just really brings an interior to the next level. I think everybody should have things that are handcrafted in their home. And that's one of the reasons I want to tell you guys again about the sponsor of today's video, Craftsy. If you're not somebody who generally makes things, I think that this is the perfect way to sort of dip your toes into the world of crafting. Craftsy is an online community and resource for all things creative. They have over 2,000 classes in more than 20 categories, including things like knitting, sewing, painting, drawing, and many others. Whether you're a total beginner or somebody looking to learn a new specific skill within a craft, there's a class for you on Craftsy. I think there's just something so satisfying and rewarding about creating something that's one of a kind with your own two hands. And if you make some sort of home good or something that can be displayed within your home, I really think it just enhances a space in such a nice way. And Craftsy is again offering my viewers a really great deal. The first 1,000 of you to click the link down in the description will get a full year premium membership to Craftsy for only $1.49. So go check out Craftsy so you can knit a blanket, paint a painting, do some sort of paper craft, anything that inspires you that will bring a personal touch to your space. And thank you again to Craftsy for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so let's dive into this home and talk about why it's so good. I think most importantly, the careful architectural response to the context of this house is really notable. It's impossible to ignore the relationship of this home with its site. We're located in this amazing picturesque valley and 
the shape of the structure, notably the angled roof line, so clearly references that in the way that it's almost mimicking the hills behind the home. And more than that, the new structure of the home that they built is entirely clad in this locally sourced red stone, which if you know anything about me and my thoughts on architectural design, you'll know that I think that is just fantastic. And it contrasts so wonderfully with the historic barn that was an ice cream factory, which is cob, which basically just means it's made of earth, like mud and stone and straw. I think one of the best things about this project is that relationship between this new and old architecture and how well the design team responded to the historic context by physically respecting that existing building. The connection between these structures is so intentional and respectful and like delicate. I think it's especially clear in plan view. You can see here that rather than just butting up the new structure adjacent to the Cobb barn, there's this courtyard space separating them. So when you enter the home, whether it's from the front or the back, you're immediately met with this in-between space, right? The only piece of this new structure that connects to that old building is this corridor that sort of reaches around the courtyard very gently. The reason I say it's gentle is a combination of the size of the corridor, it's not a super large space, and the lowered roof height, which is very much respecting that old building, and the use of windows to entirely open up that corridor to the courtyard. Using a transparent material like this feels so light and quiet next to this very solid, sturdy barn. Do you know what I mean? Like it's so respectful of this historic structure, I really appreciate it. And when you cross this threshold from inside what used to be the barn into the new corridor space, there's a pretty significant step down. And I imagine that step down combined with these huge windows almost makes it feel like you're stepping outside in a way rather than just into the new part of the home. I think it's very clever. You can also totally tell how important the courtyard is in the section view. And with that same mentality of respecting this historic structure, in order to keep the new roof line lower than that of the barn, which I'm not sure if that was some sort of preservation requirement they had to meet or just a design guideline that they set for themselves. But either way, they achieved that by actually digging down into the ground, which has this like extraordinary effect of presenting that back meadow to you at eye level. I'm deeply obsessed with this moment here. It just feels so comfortable and grounded. The way they've taken advantage of this really unique condition being partially underground by framing that view of the landscape with this very long horizontal window and the kitchen itself is fully integrated into this moment. They've designed this sort of shelf to be flush with the bottom of the window so it actually conceals the bottom rail and window frame. You see how you can't see the like bottom black edge of the window? Hiding that does such a nice job of blurring the interior with the exterior. Your eye doesn't catch that harsh boundary quite as easily. This is actually one of my favorite things to look for in thoughtfully designed modernist buildings. I feel like talented architects and designers will always address windows or window frames or mullions in some sort of interesting way because they understand it has such a significant impact on a space, that boundary between interior and exterior. I also just love the way they've created these sort of niches to store things in at the back of the countertop. I think that's such a clever way to make clutter feel less like clutter. I also love how they used that oil painting to sort of punctuate the end of this long shelf. It's just such a thoughtful composition, you guys. It's so good. I'm also obsessed with this cabinet they've designed with this sliding glass door. 
All of the wood carpentry details throughout this home are just so fantastic. He also says at one point in the home tour that they don't believe that you need to have just one species of wood in a space, which is exactly what I'm always saying. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch my video on material palettes after this. But this is a really great example of that. The different values in their wood tones are working super well together and bringing such a nice depth to the space. In general, most of their furniture and carpentry and art pieces are doing a really nice job of contrasting the pretty harsh CMU structure. I think there's a really nice balance going on here. There's sort of pockets in this home that feel more cool and other pockets that feel much more warm. It's a really nice dynamic. Like for example, this corner of the house, which is the image that I first discovered this home by, is one of those warmer pockets. This nook has a really special place in my heart because it's just so nicely designed. The way the shelves wrap around this table and the window is so thoughtfully integrated into them, as well as the stairs, and it's all framing this absolutely beautiful pendant lamp that they've designed. This is exactly the kind of human tactile modernism that I think we all need more of. I have no notes. And not to mention how perfectly these shelves are styled. Throughout their entire home, they have such nicely curated objects and art, bits and bobs, as Una calls them in the home tour. <laughs> it seems like many of them are really personal objects, which I always really appreciate, like art that their children have made, or these speakers that were in her childhood home, or this scale model that they made while they were in the design process of this house. Seeing this model really took me back to university. I studied interior architecture, so I made dozens, if not hundreds, of scale models by hand, which was genuinely one of my favorite things ever. There's just something about a handmade scale model that will never compare to a 3D model or rendering. I think it really unlocks a spatial understanding that can help you make the right design decisions. It's really beneficial. I think I have some of my models saved at my parents' house. At least I hope I do, but I really miss it. I hope one day to be successful enough that I can take the time to use handmade scale models in my design process. That would be amazing. But anyway, back to this house. Sort of keeping in theme with the excellent use of the courtyard and corridors, there's a huge emphasis on transition throughout the new structure. I especially love these sort of curved stairs that take you either down to the sunken kitchen and dining area or up to the primary suite. I feel like this is a pretty clear reference to the geometry of the barn with that curved wall. And I just love that they decided to use that language here in such a sophisticated way. It keeps a degree of cohesiveness to this home without overdoing it. I imagine it would be really easy to take this idea of using a similar curve and go too hard with it, but they didn't do that. Instead, they used it very cleverly just to sort of mark and highlight this transition between the levels. And that level change is the most architecturally significant aspect of this structure, right? And speaking of the upstairs, I love how the primary suite here has such a different feeling from the other bedrooms in the historic barn. The upstairs bedroom feels totally open to the outside and the landscape thanks to this absolutely massive window, right? Whereas the bedrooms in the barn feel much more internally focused. The windows let in a really nice quality of light, but they're by no means connecting you visually to the outdoors. He actually describes this bedroom as monastic, which I really love and I think perfectly sums up that sort of like internal emphasis. Do you know what I mean? And that window in the bedroom upstairs is basically doing the exact opposite, but both are lovely, just in different ways. I also love that they have the exact same size window in the adjacent bathroom because this view is everything, and there's no reason we shouldn't be experiencing it in the bath as well. 
and they did such a great job with the landscape design. They said they worked with a designer, James Hamilton, who designed these garden beds to be more manicured near the home and then sort of gradually fade into a more wild landscape as you move up the hill. Again, there's like a focus on transitions here, right? Transitions are really almost everything in spatial design, if you think about it. I also don't know a huge amount about landscape design, but I've always been so obsessed with gardens like this that have very tall grass that just sort of meets a lawn with no border in between them. I love that look and how natural it feels. One day when we build ourselves a house and have land to design, I fully intend to incorporate that language into my garden. Overall, I really just think that this house is basically perfect. Everything is a 10 out of 10. From the scale, the materiality, the response to context, both with the physical landscape and with the new structure's relation to the historic structure. It's such a great reference for good modernism and just a lovely source of inspiration. I love the way Russell and Una speak about their home and I think their design values and deep understanding of space are very apparent in this home. I hope you find as much inspiration here as I do. And that's all I have to say for now. I think I'll be posting this on Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving to all of my fellow Americans. My partner and I will actually be visiting my family in Palm Springs, California. So we will be leaving snowy Copenhagen to be poolside in the desert sun, getting ready to eat some tofurkey and probably enjoying some mid-century modern design. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you soon.